Hey guys and gals, YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Mr. GM Fan at the Movies. Well, today I've got a special treat for you. I've got the overview of the 8000 series. And to start this off, I just want to say nothing stops a deer like a magnum. Wait, what did I just say? Well, <clears throat> guys and gals, for close to 20 years, John Deere had done really well with the Sound Guard tractors. They sold well when farming was good and sustained the company during the rough times of the 80s. They held the top spot in the equipment market through quite a bit of the 80s because of those tractors, which had been incrementally improved multiple times. However, in Racine, Wisconsin, Case IH was getting the newly formed company together and they had one goal, beat deer. They had the tractor to do it with too. When the boxcar Magnum rolled out, the game changed quite a bit. The new 7100 series tractors were powerful, well-built tractors that not only looked good, but were comfortable and roomy. It sold well, and while Deere still held the horsepower advantage, it was only a matter of time before the red guys got comfortable with the 8.3 Cummins and started turning up the wick, which they did in 1990 with the 7150. Deere's response would be completely new. Clean sheet design. Well, sort of. <clears throat> the 8000 series clean sheet design. Uh, also known as like a white sheet. Well, it actually wasn't all that clean to start with. Well, folklore claims that the design for the 8000 series deer was sketched on the back of an airline ticket envelope. Some of the best ideas in history were sketched out on bar napkins and bits and pieces of scratch paper. And in Deer's case, it was an airline ticket envelope. According to a timeline blog post from machine finder Terrell Woods, uh, one of Deere's design engineers began playing with the idea for a, for a, a MFWD row crop tractor with a super tight turning radius. The sketches on the envelope were the basis for the 8000 series tractor released in August of 1994 for the 1995 model year. The focus was on operator comfort and handling. Well, how to make a tractor turn on a dime? Well, we've seen quite a bit written up about John Deere's caster action on a couple of uh, articles as well as blogs. And it was basically a system that tilted the front wheels a few degrees to help tighten up the turning radius a little bit. It appeared on the 50 series tractor first, uh, and by the early 90s, it was a mature feature that worked well. However, the problem Deere's engineers were running into at this point was you, only, you could only tilt these wheels and turn the wheels so far before you started rubbing them against the frame. This time around, though, there was a plan. By moving the motor and the transmission forward and higher in the tractor, they could make enough room that the wheels could tuck under the frame when turning around. At the end of the day, the motor ended up moving 10 inches up and 44 inches forward from where it was uh, in the sound guard tractors. That was a massive move. It gave them a tighter turning radius than any other big frame row crop tractor on the market. Even New Holland's Genesis tractor with the super steer couldn't touch them. Wasp waste. Moving all that around in a tractor gave Deere enough room to skinny up the back half of the hood following a principle called wasp waste to give the operator better crop visibility than ever before. But that's not where they stopped pushing things forward. The cab moved forward too, which helped the stability of the ride and the quality for the operator. At the end of the day, the 8000 series design created a well-balanced tractor that rode pretty well. For its size, it probably was the most maneuverable tractor on the market. The command view cab was also a major shift in design. I don't think Deere had ever built a bigger cab for their tractor. The brochure said 65% more cab space than ever before, and that made life a lot more comfortable for the operator. Furthermore, the front windshield offered a complete unobstructed view of the field ahead of the sound guard uh, ahead of the sound guard cabs could never do. 
that front windshield is almost 20 square feet of glass. The other major in-cab innovation wasn't necessarily new, but it was a new implementation. Command Arm was a system introduced in the 9500 Combine back in 1989 that moved all the major machine controls to the right armrest. It had gone over fairly well, so Deere's engineers adapted it to the 8000 series. Most of the guys I know who farm with these tractors really did like it. Power and putting it to the ground. For the, for the early 8000 series, there were two engines available. The 8100, 8200, and 8300 used a turbocharged and intercooled 466, just like the late SoundGuard tractors did. The 8100s were rated at 177 horsepower, the 8200s at 200 horsepower, and the 8300s at 222 horsepower. The 8400, however, used a new 497 cubic inch turbocharged intercooled engine. It's commonly known as the 8.1 liter PowerTech. It rated a whopping 250 horsepower, and in 1997, the rest of the 8000 series machines began using it as well. Typical John Deere, both motors were stout and had an excellent reputation for longevity. There's a lot of guys out there that were running the PowerTech engines with well over 15,000 hours on them. Harnessing the power was an all-new 16-speed power shift transmission, which has proven to be pretty bulletproof over the past 27 years. Well, million-dollar question, how'd they sell? Well, they sold like hotcakes. Deere had a winner on their hands from the word go. I, I didn't look up the actual sales numbers for this, but if memory serves me right, uh, Waterloo said they couldn't build them fast enough. Well, anyway, uh, that was quite an introduction for this tractor. So uh, sit back and enjoy uh, this information that, uh, that, uh, that was provided. Uh, for the fellows uh, that were buying that 8000 series. Sit back, enjoy, God bless, and please comment. I love reading your comments. We'll begin our examination of your tractor with the Command View Cab. Notice the wide steps. They are easily adjusted side to side to accommodate various row spacings, crop heights, or attachments. And there is a compartment under the cab entry platform for your convenience. This wide door provides easy entry into a spacious cab, designed so that all controls are within easy reach. This three-position damping lever should be moved to the rear to firm the ride or forward to soften the ride. Fore and aft and side-to-side -side movement of the seat is damped with hydraulic shock absorbers to improve the ride in rough terrain. To allow fore and aft movement, pull up on this handle, or push it down to lock out movement. To allow side to side movement, pull up on this handle, lock it out by pushing down on it. Lift this handle on the right side of the seat to slide the seat forward or back to the position you want. On the left armrest is the seat height adjustment switch. With the tractor key switch in the on position, you can use this rocker switch to raise or lower the seat. It will then remember this setting until you change it. The seat may also be swiveled 20 degrees to the right or 15 degrees to the left. Just pull up on the handle to make your adjustment. Push down on the handle to lock out the adjustment. And directly behind the command arm are two more seat adjustment controls. Use this one to adjust the angle of the backrest. And this one to adjust the firmness of the seat's lumbar support. The 8000 series tractors have a unique new feature, the command arm. All of the primary tractor operation controls have been placed here for the operator's convenience. And the command arm also includes a handy storage compartment for your convenience. If you purchased the optional deluxe command view cab, the position of the command arm may be adjusted for precise operator comfort. And finally, the left armrest may be raised or lowered to the desired position with the press of a button.
After you have the seat adjusted to your satisfaction, be sure to fasten your seat belt. Remember that for your maximum protection, you should always wear a seat belt whenever operating this tractor, since it is equipped with rollover protection. The steering wheel on 8000 series tractors can also be adjusted. It can be raised and lowered and telescoped in or out. Once you have the wheel adjusted to a comfortable position, it will remember that position. So you can use this handy foot release to raise the steering column out of the way when you exit the cab. Then, when you return to the cab, step on the foot release and the wheel will return to your exact setting. On the upper front section of the control console are the air quality controls. This rotary control is used to adjust the temperature of the air. And this switch controls the fan speeds. The rocker switch is used to turn on the air conditioning when it is needed. On the left side of the front console is the airflow direction knob. You can use it to direct the flow only to the windshield for defrost or to both you and the windshield. The Command View cab has some special features to help you keep cool, including a storage area for a cooler with a bump stop built into the floor mat to keep it from sliding forward. And the air quality system vent has a built-in can holder that's designed to keep your drink cold once it's been opened. Finally, if you have a deluxe Command View cab, there will be a special storage drawer located underneath the operator's seat. The 8000 series tractor has two instrument modules. This module, located on the right console, is known as the vehicle monitor. And this is called the corner post display. The corner post display has LCD readouts for ground speed, the gear that has been selected, and the engine RPM. The vehicle monitor on the right console features analog gauges for engine water temperature and fuel. And if you purchase the optional Deluxe Command View cab, the monitor will include an engine oil pressure gauge. The vehicle monitor monitors the engine, transmission, electrical and hydraulic functions of the tractor. If a malfunction should occur, a warning light will illuminate at the top of the panel, either stop engine, service alert, or information. The stop engine and service alert signal lights are duplicated on the corner post display to make sure you don't miss seeing them. If the stop warning light comes on, shut the tractor down immediately. It means that immediate attention is required to correct the problem before the tractor may be operated. If the stop warning light comes on, the vehicle monitor will also display a light showing which system has a problem. The service alert light means that the tractor needs attention as soon as possible to ensure continued proper operation. Again, the vehicle monitor will display a signal light indicating what service needs to be performed. When the information light comes on, the system has detected a problem that could reduce the performance of your tractor. Although the tractor is still operational, you should deal with the problem at your earliest convenience. To find out what the problem is, Press the pound sign key on the keypad and the LCD to the left of the keypad will display a code. Be sure to record this code for future reference. You should then check the code you recorded against those listed in the operator's manual. Possible solutions for the problem are next to the codes in the listing. These codes are especially helpful if the problem should require a service technician to correct it. You can then clear the diagnostic code from the display by holding down the pound sign key for seven seconds. This will also turn off the information light. The vehicle monitor display also can be used to get readouts on the six functions shown on the keypad to the right of the display window. They are percent of wheel slip, ground speed, PTO speed, distance traveled, the diagnostic codes you were just shown, and service hours. To view any of these, just press the appropriate touch switch and watch the display. 
Keep in mind that the percent of wheel slip will only function if the tractor is equipped with optional radar. If radar is not installed, ground speed will be calculated based on wheel speed. This will not be true ground speed. Again, be sure to read your operator's manual thoroughly to get all of the information you will need for safe operation. Let's take a moment to point out the primary controls for the 8000 series tractors. As we mentioned earlier, all of the primary controls are built into the command arm for convenience of operation. They include the throttle, transmission shift lever, hitch raise lower switch, hitch controller, selective control levers, PTO switch, and in the storage compartment are control knobs to adjust hitch height, rate of drop, and draft sensitivity. Now, let's look at the procedure for startup. First, always make sure that everyone is clear of the tractor and any attached implement. The transmission should be in park and the hitch in the lowered position. If you attempt to start the tractor with the transmission in gear, a special safety device will prevent the starter from engaging. So, to start the tractor, you must move the lever to park or neutral, and make sure that the PTO is disengaged. Set the hand throttle at the low idle position. Turn the key switch to the first position and check to make sure that all indicator lights illuminate. They will stay on about two seconds. Continue turning the key until the starter is engaged and the engine starts. Your tractor is also equipped with a starting aid for use in cold weather. For more detail, please refer to your operator's manual. The power shift transmission is standard on all of the 8000 series tractors. There are 16 forward gears and four reverse gears. Clutching isn't needed between either forward or reverse gears, and shuttle shifting between forward and reverse is modulated and requires no clutching. The corner post display shows P when the transmission shift lever is in park. When the control lever is moved to neutral, the park brake will release and the monitor will display the pre-selected forward gear and the letter N for neutral. And when the lever is in forward or reverse, the display will show an F or an R along with the commanded gear. When the tractor is initially started, the commanded gear will be seventh in forward and second in reverse. However, you can pre-select another gear up to 11 forward or third in reverse. To do this, depress the clutch and bump the control lever either forward or backward. Once you have entered a new gear, the transmission will stay in that gear until you select a new gear or restart the tractor. Once you have pre-selected the gear, the transmission will shift directly to that gear when you move the control lever into the forward or reverse slot. Use of the clutch to start or stop the motion of your tractor isn't needed. However, at times you will find it useful as an inching pedal. Examples would include operating in confined areas, hooking up implements, or during emergency stops when maximum operator control is needed. The 8000 series tractors have an operator presence safety device built into the seat. It prevents the transmission from shifting into gear unless the operator is in the seat. This assures that you are in a position to be in control of your tractor before it can be moved. Shifting from one forward or reverse gear to another can be done in two ways, holding or bumping. When holding the control lever, shifts will be made one gear at a time. When bumping the lever, the controller keeps track of the number of bumps and stops shifting when the commanded gear is reached. 
if the tractor is operating in a light load condition, such as pulling out of a field onto a road, the transmission can be shifted very rapidly by bumping the shift lever. The transmission may skip some gears to keep up with your commands. If you want, you can bump the gear shift once in the opposite direction and it will cancel your remaining forward shifts. For example, you could have bump shifted up to 15th gear. However, once the tractor reached 12th, you decided to stop shifting up. Just bump the gear shift once in the opposite direction and it will stop at the gear it's in. On the other hand, let's assume that you are moving in second and you want to quickly jump shift to 11th gear. Just depress the clutch and bump the control lever until it shows 11th gear. When you release the clutch, the transmission will skip all of the intermediate gears and go directly to 11. Keep in mind that 11th gear is the highest gear you can shift to directly. Here's another convenient feature. Let's assume that you are transporting in a gear that is higher than 11. You are slowing down to turn into your driveway with the clutch depressed. When you release the clutch, the transmission will automatically shift down to a gear that matches the ground speed of the tractor, as low as 11th gear. The transmission will stay in 11th even if the tractor comes to a complete stop. The same is true in reverse. If you are backing up in 4th gear and depress the clutch, the tractor will slow down. Then, when you release the clutch, the transmission will automatically shift to 3rd gear even if the tractor has come to a complete halt. One final safety reminder, always remember to put the shift control lever in the park position before leaving your tractor. As you know, tractors equipped with mechanical front wheel drive have greatly increased traction, but the 8000 series offers even more. The new design makes these tractors the most maneuverable MFWD tractors in the industry. Watch the unusually tight turning radius, even with these narrow tread settings. To engage the drive, use this rocker switch on the control console. The switch has three positions, on, brake assist, and automatic. A light on the vehicle monitor illuminates when it is engaged. When the switch is in the on position, the MFWD is engaged at all times. Because of this, the switch should never be on during transport since it can greatly increase wear on the tires. If the switch is in the auto position, the MFWD will disengage if you apply either brake, such as in tight turns. In auto mode, the drive will disengage whenever the ground speed goes over 9 miles per hour. This helps to extend tire life during transport. The drive will re-engage any time both brakes are applied. This feature gives you four-wheel braking. This feature also applies to the brake assist position. Brake assist, or off, is used when the operator wants the MFWD to remain off, such as when transporting or when under light load conditions. Mechanical front wheel drive can be engaged and disengaged in all gears, in either forward or reverse, during operation and under full load. Another feature that helps maintain traction is the differential lock. It is meant to be used when one rear wheel starts to spin. To engage it, depress this foot switch located between the clutch and brake pedals. Here's a note of caution. When the differential lock is engaged, it may be difficult to turn the tractor. For this reason, the differential lock will automatically disengage at speeds above 9 miles per hour. To manually disengage the lock when it's not needed, simply depress either brake pedal. The 8000 series also features field cruise control, which allows the tractor to maintain a constant ground speed. This is especially important when precise ground speeds must be maintained for planting or dispensing of chemicals. Here's how it works. Push the engine throttle all the way forward and turn the field cruise control switch counterclockwise to the click detent position. This sets the engine speed at 2200 RPM. 
you can adjust your John Deere field cruise control anywhere between 1,450 and 2,200 RPM. Be sure to refer to your tractor operator manual for more details. This is the multifunction hitch controller, designed to provide you with a high level of convenience and ease of operation. Both the command lever and the lever stop can be easily operated with one hand. The stop enables you to set the travel limit of the command lever. To change the stop position, simply push down on the knob and rotate it until you have the desired position set. To hook up to an implement, First make sure the area is clear, and then slowly back toward it until the hitch is in position. To eliminate undesired hitch movements during hookup to an implement, turn the low depth mix knob counterclockwise all the way to the click detent position. This setting is position control. Using the hitch command lever, Slowly raise the hitch until the implement can be secured at each attaching point on the quick coupler. Be sure to lock all of the latches securely. The external remote switch can also be used if you are making the hookup from the ground. You will notice that the hitch moves much slower when you are using the remote. This provides you with an additional level of safety. And, when you are using this switch, the command lever in the cab is locked out to prevent anyone from accidentally overriding the remote switch. When you complete your adjustment, simply release the switch and it will automatically go back to the neutral, locked position. The raise limit knob is located in the command arm compartment. When fully clockwise, the hitch can be raised to the maximum height. Also, under the cover, is the rate of drop adjustment. Turn it clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease the rate of drop. Keep in mind that the hitch will drop faster with heavier implements, so always use caution when you are making these adjustments. Fully lowering the implement should take at least two seconds. Excessive drop speed may cause damage. Our next hitch control is the load depth mix knob. Once you are in the field, it is quite likely that you will want to adjust the load depth mix varying the mix of position and draft control. The setting chosen will depend on soil and terrain variations as well as the implement you are using. A higher number will make the hitch more responsive to changes in draft load. For less hitch response, select a lower number. Once you have the hitch set to the desired depth, you can use the raise-lower switch on the command arm to raise and lower the hitch during headland turns. And finally, always have the hitch command lever in the raised, locked position when transporting. Thousand series tractors feature state-of-the-art John Deere pressure and flow compensating hydraulics with our exclusive electro-hydraulic selective control valves. Up to five SCVs can be used on 8,000 series tractors. Connecting hydraulic lines is quick and easy. Simply push them into the couplers. To remove them, use the easy release lever. Both hoses are released simultaneously. The SCVs are operated from the command arm using these control levers. The three levers at the front of the arm operate the three SCV valves on all 8,000 tractors. If a fourth SCV control lever is installed, it will be mounted at the center of the command arm. And this fifth lever may be field installed. The operation of these controls are very similar to previous conventional levers. The SCV levers have six different operational positions. The center position, which is neutral. Mid-range extend and retract. Detent extend and retract. And float. 
The oil flow rate and detent times are easily adjusted with these touch pads and control knobs on the touch set control panel. To adjust the flow rate, select the SCV to be adjusted and rotate the knob clockwise to increase flow and counterclockwise to decrease it. Notice that the display will move between the turtle and the rabbit as you adjust the flow. At the left end of the window is a reading between 0 and 10. This digital readout is an indicator that shows how much of the available oil flow is being used. The electronic detent time release function has three mode settings that can be selected. The first setting is zero seconds, no detent. The second is adjustable from one to 19 seconds, and the third is continuous flow. A timed release detent should be selected when you want oil flow to stop when the cylinder has reached the full extend or retract position. The amount of time that the flow of oil needs to continue varies depending on the cylinder size. Larger cylinders require more oil volume and time to fill. To program timed detent, select the SCV you want with the touchpad. Then, rotate the knob to set it to the desired number of seconds between 1 and 19. Once you have selected and programmed the time in, the oil flow to that SCV will stop when that time expires. The lever will automatically return to the neutral position when it is released, but oil flow will continue until the time setting expires. No detent, or zero, means that oil flow will start or stop when the lever is released or engaged. To set detent to zero, first touch the keypad that corresponds to the SCV you will be using. Then turn the time control knob counterclockwise all the way to zero. The time setting you have chosen, zero seconds, will appear in the LCD window under the touchpad you selected. The hydraulic oil flow will now start or stop whenever the SCV lever is engaged or disengaged. Continuous detent is used for hydraulic motors or applications where a continuous flow of oil is required. To set detent to continuous, select the touchpad for the SCV. Then, turn the knob clockwise all the way to C. The window below the touchpad will show that time equals C. The hydraulic oil flow will now continue until it is manually disengaged or until the tractor engine is shut off. To use the float position, push the lever forward and then down. The SCV will now stay in float until the lever is manually moved out of the float position. You'll see a wavy line on the monitor to indicate the float position. Here are two extremely important safety points you should always keep in mind when transporting an implement hooked to an SCV. Be sure to engage the transport lock by touching the transport lock touchpad. This will eliminate the chance of accidentally lowering the implement by touching one of the SCV levers. Then, when you arrive at your destination, unlock the controls by touching the pad again. However, the transport lock does not take the place of transport locks provided with the implement. Both locks should be used when transporting. Safety is always first. Some implements can be equipped with a position sensing device that enables you to set upper and lower limits for electrohydraulic depth control. You can adjust the depth of the implement according to load conditions while you are on the go. When using electrohydraulic depth control, the hydraulic hoses must be hooked to the number one SCV and the retract extend hoses must be hooked up correctly. If you try to raise the implement and nothing happens, the hoses are switched and the sensing device will not allow operation. The implement should raise when the SCV lever is pulled toward you and lower when it is pushed away from you. A nine pin electrical connector is required to operate the electrohydraulic depth control. When the nine pin connector from the implement is connected to the module, it sends a signal to the touch set control panel telling it that it is connected. Remember that the key switch should be off when the connection is made. A letter P appears in the window under the first SCV touchpad, indicating that the connection has been made. 
To set the operating depth of the implement, use the number one lever to lower it and touch the lower set touchpad on the touch set control panel. To set the height of the implement, raise it to the desired level and touch the upper set touchpad with the extended cylinder on it. A symbol showing where the upper and lower settings have been made will be displayed in the left side of the touch set control window. With the settings now made, simply pull the SCV lever to the detent position to raise it. Or, to lower it, push the lever to the detent position to release it. If you later decide that the upper or lower settings need to be changed, it is possible to bypass the present settings. Simply pull or push and hold the lever until you reach the desired height or depth and then touch the upper or lower touch pad to reset the limit. For your safety, the 8000 series tractors have an operator present switch built into the seat. If you should get out of the seat while an SCV lever is engaged, an alarm will sound and a light will flash on the vehicle monitor. This is the power takeoff switch located on the command arm. 8000 series tractors are equipped with a standard 1 and 3 quarter inch 1000 RPM PTO or an optional 1 and 3 eighths inch 540 or 1000 RPM PTO with a 1 and 3 quarter inch stub shaft. High horsepower tractors like your new 8000 are not usually equipped with a 540 RPM power takeoff because 540 RPM implements aren't built to handle that much horsepower. The optional 540 and 1000 RPM 1 and 3 eighths inch PTO is designed for implements that require less than full tractor power. So, to protect the PTO shaft on your tractor, the 1 and 3 eighths inch combination 540 and 1000 RPM PTO shaft has a torque limiting collar mounted on it. This collar is designed to limit damage to the PTO shaft. So if your torque limiting collar fails, it means that your tractor is running too much horsepower through the shaft, and you should either use the 1 and 3 quarter inch shaft or lighten the load. If your tractor is equipped with the combination 540 and 1000 RPM 1 and 3 eighth inch power takeoff, you can change the speed by reversing the adapter. Please keep in mind that this shaft is designed only for implements requiring less than full tractor power. First, remove these four cap screws. The shaft operates in a dry compartment, so no oil will run out when the shaft is removed. Pull the shaft out and remove the torque limiting collar. Reverse the shaft and install the collar on the end of the shaft being inserted into the housing. Reinstall the shaft and secure it with the cap screws. If your tractor has the 1 and 3 quarter inch 1000 RPM PTO used for full load operations, it will not have a torque limiting collar. To remove this shaft, simply remove the snap ring and pull the shaft out. To engage the PTO, push down and forward on the PTO switch. The indicator light will illuminate on the vehicle monitor. And the speed readout will be displayed. To disengage the PTO, simply pull the switch back. Again, the operator present system we described for the SCVs comes into play. If you should get out of the seat while the PTO is engaged, an alarm will sound and a light will flash on the vehicle monitor. For more details, please consult your operator's manual. Let's look at the adjustment of the tread setting on the 8000 series tractors. Adjusting the tread on the rear cast wheels is simple because of the rack and pinion axle. Just loosen the sleeve retaining bolts and then move the wheels in or out as desired. You will need to remove the rims when making tread adjustments to the front wheels on MFWD tractors. You can then adjust the width by changing the offset of the dish from the outside to the inside. 
the eight position wheel can also be moved from one side of the tractor to the other. Always be sure to check your operator's manual when making tread adjustments. This is important because you must make sure that the fenders are in the right position and that the right number of steering stops are raised to prevent damage to the tire. Correct ballasting and proper inflation pressures can also make a tremendous difference in the overall performance of your new tractor. Your tractor has a ballasting guide stored in the compartment behind the seat along with the operator's manual. Be sure to refer to it when ballasting your tractor. When inflating your tires, it's important to use a good dial or stick type gauge graduated in increments of one PSI or less. And once the pressures are set, they should be checked and maintained every two weeks. When you add weight to the rear of your 8000 series tractor, it is best to do it with cast wheel weights. Liquid ballast tends to stiffen the tires and will make the ride rougher. However, if liquid ballast is used in your rear tires, we recommend that the maximum fill level be 40% and that all tires on the axle have the same fill level. The final determining factor on tractor ballast is wheel slip. The proper amount of wheel slip is 8 to 12 percent for mechanical front wheel drive tractors and 10 to 15 percent for two wheel drive tractors. If your tractor is not equipped with radar, you can measure wheel slip manually. Your operator's manual will give you details on how to do it. It's not only important to have your tractor weighted properly, but also to have the weight in the right places. Weight distribution splits on mechanical front wheel drive tractors should be 40% in the front and 60% in the rear. On a two wheel drive tractor with a towed implement, the weight should be 25% in the front and 75% in the rear. With a semi integral implement, 30% in the front and 70% in the rear. And if you have an integral implement, 35% in the front and 65% in the rear. Remember that using the optimum weight for ballasting and the proper inflation pressure will get you the correct percent of wheel slip. This will increase your tractor's performance and efficiency. The 8000 series Command View cab has five locations for mounting implement monitors. One on the front post, two behind the right-hand console, and two on the rear post. Installation is easy. Simply remove the protective cap from the threaded bosses and bolt up the bracket. There are two grommets in the rear of the cab. They can be easily removed for installation of the wiring harness. The grommets can be cut to fit a particular harness and then should stay with that harness. A new grommet can be purchased from your dealer to cover the access hole after the implement harness is removed. There is one standard electrical convenience outlet on the rear console of the standard command view cab. And there's an additional outlet on the deluxe command view cab. This outlet can be field installed. These three pin connectors supply ground, live 12 volts, and key switch 12 volts. All daily maintenance, including fuel fill, can be done from ground level on your new tractor. The engine oil level should be checked daily. You can check and fill from this single convenient location. The hydraulic oil level is easily checked with this sight gauge at the rear of the tractor. And don't forget to check the engine coolant level. To clean or replace your cab filter, remove the cover and pull the filter out. To clean or replace the engine air filter, simply remove the cover and pull the element out. When cleaning the filter, be very careful not to damage the ends so they will seal properly when you reinstall it. And finally, check your tires closely for excessive or unusual wear, brakes or cuts. In addition to daily maintenance, it's very important that periodic maintenance is also performed as outlined in your operator's manual. Remember, 
Proper servicing is just as important as proper operation to the productivity, safety, and reliability of your new 8000 series tractor.